As you walk in, you can see right now up on the screen, just a little teaser, it is Chicago Active. There are people in the room with us, joining us. We've got Simon Peterson and Simon Blatz. I mean, Simon Spencer. I keep saying Peterson. Sorry, Simon. <laughs> Beth Halverson, graduate from U of all last year. She lives down in Arizona right now, works for Sonoma. David Van Lee, who is the CEO of the company. Hi, everyone. <laughs> he is live, so he can hear us. And you can hear him in a second, but you saw before the top the Sokoko, that's running in the background. I'm going to go ahead and share it. So David, Beth, and whoever else wants, I think uh, Simon might be out there. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Let me share it with them so they can follow along with us in this presentation. Coco, yes, I represent Coco right now with the product we have and what we can offer the world in the telecommunications front. However, at the same time, I want to share with you an amazing insight that's occurred in the transition to technology. Thank you very much for coming here, first of all. I'm very happy to work with you. And thank you, Simon <laughs> and Jesse, for arranging this and also for the entrepreneurship department business school for helping out. Now, myself, one of the founding members, like many startups, there's a team of people that unite at the beginning. It starts with an idea. David brought us that idea, idea and he initiated the founding of the company, he set up the corporation papers, and then started spearheading the team. Through that effort, he unified other strong industry leaders and some of the best technical people in the world in their specialty set to help start building this idea that came up called Scopa. All right, well, I'm here to share with you the virtual office. There really is a push for using virtual tools now. I'm sure you've used Twikis or Wikis, uh, Google Docs. How many people have paid attention to things like Google Wave and what's coming up the next technology? Any hands? Who's played with Second Life? Raise your hands. How many play online role-playing games? Or massively multiplayer online role-playing games? Who's a gamer? Come on, raise the hands up, please. <laughs> All right. Oh, interesting. Well, communication through history has changed in various ways. We're talking about technologies that really have only started advancing. Any of us here that have been around a little longer have seen how things have completely changed from not necessarily just drums, but all the way up to these advanced technologies, video conferencing, texting, chat, you know, screen sharing, even just something like this, walking around. When I was a kid, this was like, man, I wish I had a walkie-talkie that could reach from here across the room. You know, that was advanced. You know, before that it was, can you have a can with the string tight enough so you actually hear the vibrations come through if you talk loud enough. Well, technology started back in the early days with drums, or light signals, flags, smoke signals. I like this comic by Phil Selby. It must be for you. That's the advancements in technology that lasted <coughs> quite a bit for thousands of years. And still, these are primary ways of communicating in certain things. Around 1839, a massive advancement in technology is. That's the television. Once again, using tones <coughs> pulsed by short bursts in an electrical connection. But in the business world, these two tools expanded the capability set of human beings in business interaction. There were still difficulties with that technology. Every point-to-point -point connection was a single wire. If I wanted a communication line between myself and Dick Sloan, I had one wire connected between those two points. If I wanted to go out to Jesse, I had to put another wire out there. I had to pay someone to do that. I had to have someone string it up. I had to pay for all of the wire connections. 
So, as you can see, this is an old sketch of what the wire system looked like in New York. They didn't even have a basic switchboard. That didn't happen until a little later. So with these telegraphs, you had stations where people would send their wired gram, and then a courier would run it out to the person. It was a lot cheaper than stringing up wires to them sometimes, especially when you got into distant towns. You could have one wire to the whole town, and then these couriers would take it out to the person. That was light speed communication stuff. <laughs> you know, it's not that long ago in the big picture of things, too. You, Grandparents might have been around, but this was the primary method of getting the communication. 1876, we get the telephone. Master patent is filed by Alexander Graham Bell. Right after the phone gets hooked up, Hungarian engineer files a patent for the switchboard. Doesn't seem complex. Unplug the wire from this connection, plug it into that connection, you've got the connection between those two points. This expands the way we do business in the phone system, once again, so powerful, it does not change all the way up to the end of the 20th century. Manual switchboards, private systems, known as PPXs, where somebody would call in zero, hey, can you connect me to a so-and-so restaurant? They go, let me find the number, they connect it, flip the switch, you're connected. Electronic switchboard comes in, now we've got the five digit data. Once again, this started in 1888. This is the last major advancement in switching communication technology. That sticks around until I'm bold enough to say Sokoko comes in. <coughs> Sokoko creates a new kind of switching mechanism based on zone. Because now we are working in a new set of technology, a new world of technology called graphical user interfaces, GUIs, the internet. Even our phones are becoming more graphical in their presence. It's all visual based. You've got hyperlinks, you've got URLs to web pages. But if you can click within a zone and instantly switch to anybody else in that zone, you are your own personal operator. You find out who you want to talk to, you click into that zone, boom. You can ask someone else to join you in that zone, boom. Instantly connected. Now the benefit here that's very different from dialing a number in a switching, if you make a conference call, you have to dial the number, then patch in everybody else, or have everybody else patch into that number. Now what happens if, say Nick, you need to call over to Jesse to ask her a question. You either get another phone and put that phone on hold, don't you? And then dial it, or you got to hang up on that conference call. And I hope that you weren't the one that opened that conference call, because then everybody else is just connected. You call her, then you join everybody back up, and you continue with your conference call. Cumbersome way of handling group communications to get the information you need quickly. In a zone-based switching, you simply go from this area up to the zone or over to another area where you know Jesse is. Ask her the question, come right back in. Everybody's still connected. And the thing is, they're not connected just with voice. They're connected with any type of communication tool you can use. <coughs>